Jeep is one of the most well-known automakers in the world. No matter where you are, in Manhattan, London, the Australian outback, or the depths of the Black Forest in Germany, it will be challenging to find someone who doesn't know what a Jeep is or who can identify a Wrangler as one. It is currently used to define any off-road vehicle with a rugged exterior and is far more than simply a brand name. Getting here was easier said than done. Jeep has followed a path of failed companies from automaker to automaker like a cursed idol. In this video, we will show you the historical developments with some of their unique and significant models, so stay tuned and don't go anywhere till the end of the video. The American Army needed a general-purpose vehicle that could replace horses and motorcycles, therefore the Jeep was developed to meet that need. GP, which stands for General Purpose, is one of the most widely accepted theories on the origin of the name Jeep. Others make reference to Eugene the Jeep from the Popeye comic strip. Regardless of where it came from, the name has endured. The American Bantam Car Company in Butler, Pennsylvania, made off-road vehicles. It started by making authentic copies of Austin automobiles built in Britain. The company was in horrible health when the government began bidding for a small four-wheel drive military vehicle in 1940. Willis developed the CJ-2A from its MB military jeep. CJ stood for civilian jeep, and Willis would continue to make these modified military cars for about 40 years. The Wrangler replaced the CJ, which continues to serve the same purpose today. Willis didn't stop there, though. It started the process through which Jeep evolved into a standalone brand by aiming to create a comprehensive Jeep automotive lineup. It launched some eye-catching designs including the Jeepster, a small convertible with a traditional car-like look, a pickup truck in 1947, and the enduring station wagon in 1946. Years later, the notion of Jeeps that drove more like automobiles was revived when Jeep introduced its first crossovers. The American Bantam created a prototype that exceeded what the Army had specified, Concerned about the tiny automaker's ability to create the necessary automobiles, government officials engaged Willis Overland and Ford to build the Jeep. Ford purposefully emblazoned an F on as many Jeep-related parts as possible to set them apart from Willys built Jeeps. Willis preserved design rights after the war and tried to give the Jeep a second shot in the civilian sector. In the same way, the original Jeep left American Bantam in the dust. The Jeep brand has proven to be more enduring than its progenitor. In 1953, Willis was purchased by Kaiser, the firm that built the Liberty Ship, an actual vehicle from World War II. Kaiser entered the auto sector following the war. Willis was entirely dropped in favor of Kaiser Jeep in 1963. The Wagoneer, Jeep's more upscale successor to the CJ, debuted in the same year. The Wagoneer, whose body was essentially an enclosed station wagon, was one of the original forerunners of the modern family SUV. The American Motors Corporation AMC, acquired Kaiser in 1969 to accelerate its exit from the automotive industry. As the Jeep brand grew significantly under AMC's ownership, the rest of the Wisconsin-based automaker's lineup gradually faded. This resulted in part from a lack of vision, ongoing financial issues, and quality issues. Chrysler acquired AMC in 1987 and closed it down shortly afterward because in the end, not even collaboration with Paris-based Renault could save it. In hindsight, Chrysler wanted Jeep's name, image, products, and intellectual property. Two significant Jeep models were introduced in the 1980s. The Cherokee from the XJ generation was initially introduced in 1984. Jeep's first genuinely modern SUV was the XJ, which further helped the brand gain popularity. The XJ was manufactured with several revisions until 2001 before being replaced by the Liberty. While Chrysler was subtly preparing to take over, Jeep was discreetly completing a replacement for its venerable CJ, which had produced innumerable versions since its beginnings. The first Wrangler, YJ, which originated in the World War II, era Willys, was designed entirely from scratch by Jeep because it needed to be more rudimentary for modern tastes. Even though it was improved over its predecessor, it still had excellent off-road capabilities. The YJ seemed like a good idea since it merged the CJ's looks and off-road prowess with modern amenities, but Jeep purists first ignored it. They hated the YJ's square headlights, eventually replaced with more traditional round ones. It will be in its fourth generation as of July 2020. When Chrysler decided to buy Jeep, it made the right decision. In the 1990s, SUV sales surged and Jeep was ready to cash in using its knowledge. It introduced the first Grand Cherokee in 1992 to replace the Grand Wagoneer, which had been available for some time. 
As the 1990s concluded, everything started to unravel. Following the 1998 merger of Chrysler and Daimler AG, the firm prioritized trucks and SUVs over quality and fuel economy. Jeep's first car-based crossovers, the Compass and Patriot, met with significant criticism. At the same time, the huge commander became a white elephant after the 2008 financial crisis and rising gasoline prices kicked in. In the midst of all of this, Jeep introduced the first-generation Grand Cherokee SRT. This high-speed hot rod ignored off-road capability in favor of on-road performance. Jeep discontinued its pickup truck lineup in 1992 after the XJ-based Comanche's manufacturing ended. So, when the original Jeep truck, the Gladiator, returned in 2018, Jeep enthusiasts were ecstatic. Based on the fourth-generation Wrangler, the Gladiator debuted at the 2018 Los Angeles Car Show. This vehicle has four doors and a variety of engines available, including a turbo diesel V6. Jeep sells roughly a million automobiles annually, but analysts predict this figure will climb. After the 2021 model year, the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk is anticipated to return this year. The 6.2L supercharged Hemi Hellcat V8 engine should continue to power the next Jeep Trackhawk, making it as powerful as the current model. The same V8 that drives the Charger SRT Hellcat, which generates 707 horsepower and 645 lb-ft of torque, may be used to power this vehicle. The Grand Cherokee Trackhawk's Zero, 60 time is 3.5 seconds, and its peak speed is 180 miles per hour. While the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk is not currently on sale, the 2023 Trackhawk pricing is anticipated to start at roughly $94,000. It will be up against tough competition from vehicles like the Porsche Cayenne Turbo, Mercedes AMG GLE 63S, and Range Rover Sport SVR. Although the Jeep Trackhawk 2023 has not been officially confirmed, the Automotive Anonymous video below provides a thorough breakdown of the present Trackhawk and what to anticipate from the future model. A new model of the Jeep Grand Cherokee will be launched in the first few months of 2021. Jeep also plans to return the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer nameplates for two SUVs built on the same primary platform as the Ram 1500. Fans of Wranglers will be thrilled by the model's extensive list of enhancements. One upgrade is a plug-in hybrid powertrain, enabling the automobile to go short distances purely on electricity. Another enhancement is a 6.4-liter, naturally aspirated V8 engine with 450 horsepower for the four axles. Jeep never ceases to surprise its fans. Who can foretell what they will consider next? Today, more than 50 years of custom and design components are included in both the Wrangler and Cherokee. Jeep's renowned boxy off-road design will endure forever as they continually reinvent themselves and their offerings. But tackling the outdoors is best done in a Jeep. There comes the end of the video. We would appreciate your feedback through comments. If you still need to subscribe to the channel, why not subscribe and press the bell icon for notification.